This is Huawei's MateBook E. It's a new Windows 11 tablet from them that is powered by the Core i5 1130G7 with Iris XE graphics, 80 executional units. Now the 12.6 inch OLED screen on the MateBook E here is an absolute stunner. It's 2560 by 1600 resolution and you can see that we have stylus support too. So it does support the M Pencil second generation which has two milliseconds of latency only and it has a keyboard, two of them in fact. Now I've got the magnetic keyboard, cover keyboard here which also acts as a stand to prop it up and I'll be covering that in this review. So it has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. It does support their new super device. So with other compatible Huawei devices, you are able to seamlessly pair them up, share files, screen shares, do all of that. Included with the MateBook E, you will find our 65 watt power supply. It's a nice small size and a long type C to type C cable. The build quality of this tablet is very good. It is premium. So the back material here is a matte finish, but this is a glass fiber. The frame around the outside is magnesium. We have the Huawei logo right here. There's a 13 megapixel camera. We've got a flash. This camera is not actually too bad. Takes an okay photo. If you do need it, you can take photos of like whiteboards or text or whatever. So it's handy to have even on a Windows 11 tablet. So very nice finish to it. It does pick up a few fingerprints I have noticed. Now it is quite thin, only around 8.2 millimeters or so that I'm measuring. So that's really the thickness of a mobile phone. Here we do have a volume up and down button. Now this is made out of metal. The finish to the frame is very good. Now you can see these little vents here. This is the intake and then we have a little fan inside and then it blows the hot air out of the top. Later on in this video, I will give you a sample of what that fan sounds like. Then down the bottom of it, we've got three pogo port pin connectors for the hardware keyboards. Now there are two keyboards, but I've only got one version. On the right, we have a Thunderbolt 4 port right here, and it's just this port. This is my biggest complaint about the MateBook E here. It should have, for me at least, I would love to see a type A port on this, and even another Thunderbolt port would be great to have too, because some devices that I connect up like external drives, I need to use this port for the Thunderbolt 4, and then I've got nothing to charge it with at the same time, and I have to use dongles and adapters, which is rather annoying. So then on the left, we've just got this, which is our 3.5 millimeter, and then the power button slash GoodX fingerprint reader. This works really well and it's only literally a second or so to unlock the device. Now the quality out of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is very good, the loudness is good, and I don't hear any static coming through it, which is great. And our magnetic keyboard, so it has a very nice layout to it, and the travel on these keys here is a tad short, it's about 1.3, 1.4 millimeters, so not like your typical keyboard, a bit shorter to keep the thickness of it down. So with this docked with here, the tablet and everything, if I just insert it, it goes here in the top, close that down, uh, that then brings the thickness up to about 16 millimeters, which is not really too bad. Now I do have my scales here with me and I can quickly just measure this, see what the total weight is going to be. So 1.14 kilos, that's very good for a keyboard and a 12.6 inch Windows 11 tablet. And then the tablet itself, how much does that weigh? That won't be much, I don't think. It's approximately 709 grams, so a good weight there. Now these keys here are not backlit. The material used is a synthetic finish to it, matte black. I've noticed that it tends to get dirty quite quickly for some reason. It shows dust and any little bits of lint and things. They do seem to stand out quite quickly, probably because of just the style and the material they've used. Now a touchpad here, left and right mouse buttons. It is of a reasonably good size for a Windows 11 tablet and the fact that it's like a type cover style. Now I do really like it. Sensitive movements on it, the cursor does not jump around. It is accurate. The finish is smooth, not the smoothest I have felt here, but overall a good touchpad and a good keyboard. 
Now at the, up the top here is magnetic where it slots in. And here we have the kickstand. So you can angle that whatever angle you do want. And the back of the material here is again that same synthetic finish with the Huawei there. It's very premium, feels good. And this hinge part, nice and stiff. So I'll just slot the tablet into it here so you can see very quickly that magnetically it's just going to sit in like so. And you can see it on a desk here. So you're able to adjust the angle of it to suit, but you cannot prop up the keyboard. It lies all the time completely flat. Back onto that display. So the color coverage from this is at a true professional level. This is without a doubt the best display I've seen in a Windows tablet. So 100% sRGB coverage, NTSC 95%, Adobe RGB 97%, and then P3. Just like their claim, 100% P3. This is superb, great. Brightness, now Huawei's claim is 600 nits. I've been able to achieve around 420 nits. Indoors it's been perfectly fine and even outdoors because it's fully laminated and it is an OLED, you'll still be able to make it out. So not quite as bright as their claim. I'm not too sure why if it's drivers, the current firmware, but I do hope that they can increase that to that 600 nits of brightness. It's an outstanding display here. And as mentioned, it is the best I've seen in a tablet. Huawei's MatePok E does ship with Windows Home, you'll see in system, and it does activate, no problems at all with it. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage that I mentioned there at the start with it, and that 11th gen chip. Now looking in the device manager, you will of course see it listed eight times. This chipset, that is because it has eight threads, but it is a quad core. Maximum turbo is four gigahertz. It is a 10 nanometer chip and it does have Iris XE graphics, but only the 80 executional units, not the 96, which is the maximum spec version. Now the RAM on it, if you take a look, you'll see that it is running at a reasonably high speed, but not the fastest it could actually be sent, set at. So this is dual channel, but it could run at 4,266, which I have seen with some other tech. For example, their notebook. Their notebook, the MateBook 14S, runs the RAM slightly faster there. So they, we're missing out on a little bit of performance there, as you'll see with the benchmarks later on. So just back into the device manager, a couple of things I wanted to point out. The fingerprint reader, which is located in the power button that I showed you before when we took a look at the design. This is a good X1, and it works really well. It can work with Windows Hello. It's fast. No issues with it at all. And under our wireless here for the wireless card, it is a very good one. So Wi-Fi 6, it's the AX201, and it does have Bluetooth 5.2 support. And you get around transfer speeds, at least with my router here, around 1.3 to 1.4 gigabits per second. So even quicker than a gigabit LAN port. So that is good there. And no problems with the signal strength range. It's all checking there. Quite good. So the performance of it, general performance I won't go over, so documents, spreadsheets, things like that, all very quick. With this kind of spec, 16 gigabytes of RAM, I won't be covering that because there's no need. However, some benchmarks. Let's take a look at Geekbench 5 here. Not bad, but I did expect this single core performance to be a little higher. Now I have been running it in the performance mode. So if you tap function and P, you've got the option between having balanced and then performance. Now after a while, it will automatically go back into balanced or when you unplug the power cable from it, it goes back into the balanced mode. I guess it's to save a bit of battery. And then we have 3D Mark. So night rate score, this is for the integrated graphics. It's okay, not that bad, but I've seen higher and this here too. So time spy, the Iris XE, when it's running with a 35 watt part, this is only a 15 watt part too, by the way, it can actually get scores double this and do a lot better when it comes to Time Spy. But for a 15 watt part here, that actually is not too bad. Now the SSD that's included within it, you can't upgrade it, okay? Absolutely not. You have to open the whole thing up to do so. It's a shame it doesn't have a little hatch on the back where we can just slot in a larger SSD if we needed to in the future, but no. The good speeds from it, as you can see. Now I have seen faster with the writes, but the reads, they're pretty spot on. That's as good as any of the Samsung 970 Evos. So it is PCIe 3.0 spec, even though this chipset, the 11th gen, does support PCI 4. We don't get it here with this unit. Another benchmark, which is 
very popular this one, Cinebench R23. You can see single core there, we're getting just over 1200 points and then nearing towards 3000. So it does show us that it has, yes, a little bit of power, but it certainly isn't an eight core 16 thread monster when it comes to things like Cinebench. But general performance here for your computing like spreadsheets, things like that, it runs great. Everything is quick, it's snappy. What about video playback? So I do have my typical test here. This demanding file is a 4K one. So a few stutters there in the start. And even when I just maximized it, it started a little bit. But once it gets going, then it doesn't drop any frames and it becomes smooth. So it's not, unfortunately, flawless performance there. And this is the Sony Swordsmith file. This is 60 frames per second 4K. And once it gets going, same thing. It's running fine now and not dropping any frames. I'll just skip ahead. That is looking good. It's just that initial little stutter and lag that it does there at the start. The software that is included with this laptop is called Huawei PC Manager. So you can do all sorts of things with this. You're able to connect to various different Huawei devices. So Huawei Share, you can see I've got the MatePad 11. I have the P50 Pocket right here that I do have unlocked. It'll show up. So you can seamlessly transfer files over to them, to and from your different devices. It makes it very easy to work with them all at once here with Huawei Share. And then you've got, this is very handy, under optimization. So driver updates, it pulled through a firmware update. It even pulled through a firmware update for Bluetooth. I've never seen that before. And it keeps us all up to date very easy. You've got your optimization, the performance modes here too that you can tweak. But the main one is this, under the control panel for Huawei, you'll find the super device. So there's been a lot of talk about this. It's just very handy feature that with all your Huawei tech, you can connect them all up seamlessly. And here I've got the MatePad 11. So I've connected to it now and I've set it up. So it's just going to be a secondary display, duplicating the display at the moment, but I could make it a extended desktop or another, okay, you can just set up a separate screen. So you can see here as I drag things around on the screen of the MatePad 11, it's also pulling through on the MateBook here E. But there is a little bit of a delay you can see with the latency. That's normal because it's being transmitted wirelessly. So Super Device is very handy for just quickly moving over files from your different Huawei tech. And I do actually like it. I think it's, it's practical and uh, I will be using it. YouTube test now, it is 4K streaming here, and I do have it set to the highest possible, which is 4K 60 frames per second. And you'll see here with the stats that occasionally it will drop a frame just here and there. It's not that common. This performance isn't perfect, but you don't actually see these drops at all because you can see that every so often it will just be one or two frames out of the 60 you're going to see that have been dropped. So it does look good, 4K streaming on this in YouTube. Now this tablet is enjoyable to use as just that, a tablet as a Windows 11 tablet. I know most people, and I will probably always use it in the keyboard because it's just easier, and it's more like a two-in-one laptop really and using it as a laptop. But you can type here with the on-screen keyboard not really too much of an issue. For quick little searches and things like this, I don't find it a problem, the on-screen keyboards. So it is very fluid here, as you'd expect. The typical stuff like documents, browsing, all really quick here. So what I wanted to do is just check out one of my own clips here to give you a demo of what the speakers sound like on this. And they are very, very good, these speakers. So I'll jump into one of these videos and I'll turn the volume up. Okay, wow, just wow. Those are very impressive speakers for a tablet. Not only are they loud, they've got some bass to them, good mids, and they're not distorting. That was 100% volume, so very powerful, really good, impressive speakers for a tablet. And here now with 4K video editing, this is something that's very demanding with Adobe Premiere Pro. So how does the Iris graphics fare with the eight executional cores? The timeline seems to be sometimes 
a little laggy. It says I hit playback here. I've just got a playback resolution, which is only a quarter. Phones, as you heard from my That's sound fine. Trust me. But if you set it anything but over a quarter, it starts to drop frames those mics in are the playback. Quite good. Not quite Although as good as just now your it seems phone. okay there, but it really depends where you are on the okay. timeline. Now very my video quality. is a very basic edit right here. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you the exact export time because Adobe Premiere Pro, like always, is playing up. This is my third time reinstalling it. I don't know what is going on. It just won't let me export files. I could do everything else with the timeline here, but this keeps happening. It keeps wanting to crash and freeze on me. So the time would be approximately 45 to 50 seconds to encode 4K at the YouTube preset one minute of footage. So it's relatively quick, around 50 seconds is good. And a very quick look at gaming performance. So can you game a little on the side with this MacBook E? You can, but for some reason the performance is not what I expected it to be for Iris XE graphics. This is just GTA 5 on normal settings, 720p. Now it should be able to get a much better frame rate than this, but it seems to be stuck at 30 frames per second. And no, I haven't got VSync on or anything like that. It just doesn't want to do any better than this. And you see that the CPU use here is only around 40% and the GPU around 40% as well. So it's not being stressed and I do have it in the performance mode. It just doesn't make sense to me why it's running games like this nowhere near as as good as it could. So I hope a firmware update will be able to fix this. Now this game is working well and that is Age of Empires 4. I have it set on 1080p and the scaling for the gameplay for the graphics to 60%. So you could even lower this down, but it's running at 70 frames per second. It's a little hard to see up in the top left hand corner, but it's doing well. Not a problem there and you can run this game. Later on, I've had even bigger battles. This is a, just the start of a skirmish here, but I've had huge games, and you will get a little bit of slowdown later on when there's a lot going on, but you just need to scale down those settings to what you prefer. But this game does run well on the Iris XE graphics. Now the stylus, this is called the M Pen, so it's the second generation, very nice stylus here. Now it does have this indent on the top, that's because it's going to magnetically just sit here on the top and it is very powerful, that magnet that holds it into place. It shouldn't drop off. Now it is wirelessly charging. Now this new second generation M pencil, this one has two milliseconds of latency, 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. So when you are about a centimeter away from the screen, it then detects it. You can see right there the little hover icon and just one little press there will leave a tiny little dot. Now, of course, the harder you press, the thicker that line is going to get. Now, the latency on it is very, very quick here, and I'll just demonstrate. It does not seem to lag behind at all. It's almost instantaneous. How does it feel on top of the screen? So you've got different nibs that you can change over in the box here. This is plastic against the glass here, and it doesn't have a pencil feel to it, but it's not too bad. There is a tiny fraction of resistance when you use it. So right up in the edges here, it does work. And if I was just to clear off a little bit of this, I will quickly just show you what it's like for jotting down notes. Handwriting with it is not bad at all. It's very, very quick here. So you can see, hello world. Overall, I do think it's a good stylus. Now, what are the thermals like? So they do have quite a good cooler in this because, well, it's not overheating, is it? It's getting up to 85 degrees and the back of the tablet does get a little warm, a little hot to the touch. I've seen it getting up to around now, it gets up to about 39 degrees Celsius when you're continuously pushing it hard. There's that little fan in there. So it has pulled up to 28 watts in the performance mode. So that is boosting our wattage there. The power limit one, you can see set to 20 and then the power limit two up to 30. So a little fan in there, just how loud does it get? Here's a sample of the MateBook E under full load, getting a little hot and you'll hear that fan at 100%. Now I do think for a built-in 
Tablet webcam, this is very good, and it's in the top bezel. It's not even a big camera. The quality, great. 1080p, 30 frames per second, or even 60 frames per second. Now, I did notice something strange, that if you set it to 60 frames per second, it actually crops in really close. Not too sure why it does that. I think it's just a, a minor bug, or who knows. There is a status LED next to that webcam, and the audio you're listening to these are the inbuilt microphones on the tablet. So again, very good. So great webcam, great microphones, and great speakers all around. The audio is excellent. And you don't even hear the fan that is currently on in the tablet. Okay, Linux support. I know a lot of you do ask this. I tested it out. This is Linux Mint, the latest version. And the touchscreen works, the touchpad works, but the audio didn't. No sound out of the speakers. So that's one issue you're going to have to try and figure out. So that display on this is really nice, and the performance is great from the Core i5. However, the battery capacity to have such demanding components here just is falling short. So 41 watt hours, according to HW Info, I was only able to get just over four hours with about 10 Chrome tabs opening open there, streaming Netflix, and looking at a lot of YouTube. And I didn't think that that was that impressive, really. I could have used a lower power setting with Windows power saving, I lowered my brightness a little bit more perhaps, so I might be able to squeeze out five hours, but really not that impressive with the battery life. So you're gonna to have to carry around the power supply and the cable so you can get a full day's use out of it because it just won't be able to do it on the battery. It charges really quick, at least that's good, at 65 watts. And the keyboard, very nice to type on. Touchpad is excellent. Those speakers, wow, <laughs> really good very good webcam, very good microphones. It is such a good tablet, but there's one big thing for me. It's just one port on there, just one port. Thunderbolt 4, great, fast port, a good port, very versatile display out, but it's only one, there's only one. Where's a type A port on this or another type C port? It should really have them. And what about a micro SD card slot so would have been good as well. That's where it really falls short for me. Otherwise, this is a absolute fantastic, stunning Windows 11 tablet here. And yes, we are missing out on the 12th gen U chips. I just don't think they're ready, not yet, or ready in time for this design. So hopefully the refresh, we get 12th gen, and we get at least a Type A USB 3 port on it. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the MateBook E from Huawei.